الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم هدى الناس فمنهم شاكر ومنهم كفور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear brothers and sisters, we begin with praise and gratitude. The whole entire universe has been put to our expense. We are blessed with countless numerous favors from our very existence and consciousness to all of these blessings and favors we soak up every day. I just recently got back from a very spiritual retreat uh, in Morocco, thus the, the duds. And it was a very special time to connect with various scholars and to uh, kind of put in perspective what we're doing here at MCC. And I can tell you that there are many Imams across the country that wish they had the opportunity to start with their own fresh project like what we have here. And so, we must ask ourselves, first and foremost, what are we doing? What are we doing here? That most consequential question that every human being will ask in their life, what am I doing in this life? What is my purpose? What will come of me when I die? These are the most crucial questions that anyone can ask. The answer is very simply, we are here to be the light. We were created with our own independent consciousness to be the light, to shine the light. What does that mean? The physical world around us, we see so much beauty and life. And the reason why we can experience and appreciate life and the beauty of creation is because of light. Light is the source of the life. It is the source of the beauty of life. And that's why he is Nuru Samawati wal Now, if we look at the human being, every human being has an amazing, beautiful life with these built-in systems of functionality so complex but so naturally functioning in a way that is built for self-preservation. The body is already made that way. But the heart, in its mystical relationship with the soul, that is what we must tend to. The heart was created with divine light. It has a basic inclination and awareness of God. The heart has unlimited potential to take in more light and to shine it bright. This is the reality that we see in this life. So the prophets were sent with revelation in order to establish a means to kindle and develop that light in the heart. But where is that light best cultivated? It's the next ayah after Allah nuru samawati wal ard and what we've been talking about. Fi buyutin adina Allah wa an turfa'a wa yudkara fi asmu. يُسَبِّحُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ In some houses that were raised, that were built for the purpose of His remembrance, of glorifying His perfection in the day and the night, these are the mosques. I can tell you in my own experience, I was at a position in the year 1999 where I had embraced the light. 
I had embraced the means for cultivating and kindling the light in my heart. And that was a translation of the Holy Quran. I came to know that that was the Word of God and that Muhammad sallallahu is the final messenger of God. But the problem was my upbringing and the people who I'm around a lot and the fast lane of life trying to work and make ends meet and things like this. When I stepped foot in the mosque, it was not easy. When I first started going to the mosque, for me, at that time, less so for yourselves, most everybody was very strange, very foreign. But, I knew why they were there. And that's why I was there. Because of the declaration of faith rooted in the light. So I saw the character of the people. So there's physical light that we see in life and creation. Then there's spiritual life, which is the solution to all of the problems of the world. And the source of the problems of the world is the darkness of human beings who are following a dark one who spreads darknesses. The enemy, Iblis, Satan. So, if we are to truly answer the call, Islam is about cultivating and kindling this light in your heart. Now see, a lot of people go to mosques and they pray there. But for whatever reason, the light is not being kindled right. And you see, when they leave the mosque, they're not making the world a better place. They're not affecting those around them to become better people. They're not inviting new people to come to the mosque. So that's why we have to make sure that we embrace the light as it was embraced by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then it will shine. And it will attract people to it. And you will see the results. So that's what we're doing here with this NCC project. It's going to happen in the mosque. But if that mosque's mission, vision, and value system is not deeply rooted in the Qur'an and the Sunnah as it was revealed to the Prophet wasallam, then there will be a disconnect. So, we are told of a deal. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Oh believers, would you like me to tell you of a business deal that will save you from a painful torment? تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون. You should put your faith in God and His Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and you should be ready to struggle and strive. To deal with discomfort in the spiritual path with the veracity and fortitude that it was revealed with. And then he will forgive you all of your sins. All your sins will be forgiven. But you have to put yourself and your wealth in this path. You have to put your time in the message. You have to volunteer your time for the sake of Allah. You have to put your money into establishing the path of Allah. And the scholars have agreed that it is incumbent upon believers wherever they may be to establish themselves and their infrastructure locally before worrying about someone else somewhere else. So that they can have that strength 
of a home presentation and representation of the religion. If they send their money elsewhere, then they will fail locally. There are people who have strong infrastructures with lots of money in America and elsewhere. They are ready to help outside because they have their own base established. There is no international campaign to establish the University North Charlotte Muslim Community Center. That is going to happen here and nowhere else. It's our home. Just like we are putting money into the home we live, this is the spiritual home. This deal is the deal. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'mineen anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. Indeed, God has bought from the believers their selves and their wealth. And He said, and I'll give you an eternity of paradise and bliss if you will struggle and strive with patience and fortitude, sticking to what's right as you know it from the revelation, which confirms your inner, innate knowledge you were born with. We have to make sure that we are deeply invested into this message. Then he describes who are those people who have given their self and their wealth. <laughs> They know that they are wrong about what they are wrong about and they are ready to admit it to God and to whoever else they need to, to reconcile in that reality. There are those who are devoted in servitude towards their Creator. There are those who are living in praise. There are those who are praying and fasting and promoting what is right in the world around them and standing up against and prohibiting what is wrong and they protect what God has made sacred. So give them the glad tidings of paradise. These qualities and characteristics I can tell you in my own experience. I came from the ignorance of immorality and a confusion in theology. When I embraced the mosque, I was confused. But the more time I spent reading in the library and listening to the different lectures that were going on, and then when God blessed me to take a path to seek the sacred sciences, all that would not have come true if I didn't start in the mosque. It starts there. This is where the hearts are cultivated. <laughs> Secularism has cast upon the Muslim world the idea of either you are praying Friday prayer and now you fulfill your religion as the Christians are doing on Sunday. Or, you're praying the Friday prayer, and then you're coming in to make sure you catch daily prayers, but your life and character is not transformed in a daily process. That you are not a source of fixing the world by the projects and action and volunteerism and the work to spread altruism, benevolence, and compassion to the world around you. You are not forming alliances, you are not volunteering, you are not standing up against social injustice. You're just praying a prayer in the mosque to get some rewards. And that is conflicting with the example of the Prophet and his companions. The mosque is the center. That's where people come and they learn and they grow and they build spirituality and they gain fellowship with other people who are devoted and putting God at the center of their lives. Then when they leave, they're on a mission. They are out to do something to make the world a better place, to shine the light. This is our religion. This is how the Prophet وسلم, after they went through 13 years of oppression and persecution and torment, and they had to hide their religion, they left right when he stepped foot in Quba. 
in Quday, he found a group of Muslims. This is not where the majority of the Muslims live, but he told them, let's get together, let's start forming some bricks, and let's all build a mosque here. That's the first mosque ever built by the Prophet is It's not listed in the book. It was in a place outside of Medina where he found a small village of Muslims living. And he said, the first thing we have to do is build the mosque. And then they did the Juma. And then a week later he goes into the heart of Medina. And then he told the people, let's all get together. Every single person took part in building the mosque of the Prophet And they spent many days in sacrifice their business and everything to make sure that we could establish this sacred place for us. This is the religion and how it starts. This is how the light is kindled in the hearts. The Quran emphasizes the light and to follow the light and that the Prophet came as a light and with the light. The Quran emphasizes this. But it makes a point when it's the most significant chapter in which it talks about the light of God. It talks about a special reality in the heart that the heart was made a special place. And that that light is already there whenever you're born. Then the darkness of Satan and his allies and the world around you will try to darken that to where it can't shine. But prophets were sent with revelation and we have a detailed, amplified, preserved, a miraculous reservoir of light to take from. That was the mosques are meant to be the center of the Muslim community. It should be a place that husband, wife, children, all of them should be there on a regular basis. This was the sunnah. We saw the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. We saw that they were regularly attending the mosque. The mosque was filled with men and women. This was the sunnah. They were all there growing spiritually. And in the beginning of Medina, there had not been the hijab revealed yet. So don't tell me they're wearing niqab and all that from day one. This is coming from one country and it needs to stop because it's a lie. People grow spiritually. This is the best place for it. The last thing you want to do in the mosque is to alienate someone who came for spiritual growth and development. We are here building this mosque upon the foundations of the Qur'an and the Sunnah as it was without the confusions that have been cast upon it by some modern people who feel like they are reviving the religion in a very extreme way. The Prophet ﷺ is the best example. So I am calling you all with this sermon to become part of this center. Friday, perhaps Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, find some, there will be many opportunities. We will be building our membership, we will, we will be offering various programs, educational, vocational, volunteer work, working for the poor, working with community service projects. We're here to shine the light, but we have to cultivate it first, and that comes with building a jama'ah. Don't say, oh, a lot of those people that I don't know them. You have to come to get to know them. They are your brothers and sisters in faith. And I promise you, it will not happen that someone will get away with acting in a way that will make what somebody want to leave because of some harsh judgment. Because this is not the sunnah. The secret of the success of the Prophet it is by the mercy and compassion of God that you, Muhammad, your main characteristic in dealing with these people and their spiritual growth, that you were gentle and kind with them, easygoing. 
that you help people grow upon their own reality, not trying to force your own opinion. So we are here with a very special project. We have learned from many, many mosques, looking at the good things that they have achieved and trying to emanate that. And looking at the mistakes that many have achieved and making sure that doesn't happen. We have an amazing dedicated group, but we want to grow that group. So today, inshallah, after the khutbah, we will explain to you a little bit more how we want to do that. I have committed that I'm going to make it easy for you and I'm going to pack in for each sermon what we need to in a time that helps it for everybody to get back to work. Inshallah. I have put my focus and dedication on both an education plan and an inclusive and spiritual development plan. And all we need is people and money to grow it. You see? That's all it is. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, open our hearts. Ya Allah, open our hearts. Remove the darkness from our hearts. Ya Allah, illuminate our hearts. Ya Allah, you are the one that can turn the heart. We are asking you to turn our hearts towards you. Ya Allah, turn our heart towards the light. Ya Allah, make us people who seek you and your beloved Prophet wasallam, so that we may get closer to you for eternity. Ya Allah, remove from us the attachment to the world and materialism. Ya Allah, make us a people who embark upon the spiritual path. A people who are ready for self-accountability, for blaming the self, for understanding the wrongs and to amplify the rights in our lives. Ya Allah, we ask you to eradicate from us arrogance, ignorance, foolishness, laziness, weakness, cowardice. Ya Allah, we ask you to emphasize in us the strength of faith that we saw with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us a people who are humble. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us a people who are kind and gentle. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us wisdom and understanding of ourselves, of the people around us and our environment. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us the people who are examples for the people of Charlotte, that shine a moral light that comes from the book and the messenger who lived the book. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us a people who are leaders amongst the pious and the righteous and to make our spouses and children as such. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us those who have love in our hearts for those who have embraced you, who put their faith in you. Ya Allah, remove the division from the Muslims. Bring our hearts together, give us strength and dignity and fortitude to work and struggle and strive and give us patience in this path. Ya Allah, send your peace and blessings and mercy upon your final messenger, Muhammad wa